I want to welcome you all to today's presentation once more again. I'm so excited to receive you and have you here with me as we make a study together. Previously, we looked at the first lecture which spoke about the time in which we are living. We also came to look at Daniel chapter 2 where we found the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 7 where we found the vision now which Daniel had. But the dream and the vision had the same message that God wanted to communicate with his people. That the message that God wanted to communicate with you and with me to remind us of the time in which we are living in. Today we have a very special subject of which I want you to pay much attention as well even as we are going to relate whatever is in revelation with what Daniel spoke in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7. So revelation now is here to reveal to us exactly what God wanted to communicate in those two chapters. I invite you to stay uh, connected, stay uh, attentive, even as you listen. But before we proceed, as always, we want to ask the Lord to come and speak to us. We invite him through prayer. As I always emphasize, it is always important to kneel before our Lord, our God, and our Maker. Psalms tells us to David in Psalms tells us to come to worship God as we kneel down and bow our heads. But this platform cannot allow me to do that. Those of you that can make it or that have a, 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 a comfortable place where you can kneel and pray, please do so as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our kind and loving Master in heaven, we want to say thank you once more for giving us an opportunity to listen to your word. We want to invite you to descend from heaven even as, you, even as you come to speak to our hearts. The message that you have for us, it is a message that determines our destiny. If we take it seriously, we are rest assured that you are going to take us to heaven. If we decide not to listen to this word and go our way, our destiny is hell. But we want to ask you to give us the hearts to listen to this word. There is so much that you have to reveal to us before your soon coming. Thank you for the books of prophecies that are able to reveal to us, to give us hope, to give us light, even as we move, as we journey on to Canaan, which you have prepared for us. Thank you that you are going to speak to our hearts. Thank you that you are going to be with us. I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject title today says, Whose mark do you choose? It is a question to you and to me. Whose mark do you choose? Remember, in Daniel chapter 2, we looked at the statue which showed us how the kings, how the, uh, how the Lord re revealed the, 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 the kings of how they ruled this earth. The head of God, the chest of silver, the head of God representing Babylon, the chest of silver representing Medo and Persians, then the thighs uh, of brass representing Greece, then the legs of iron still representing Roman Empire. Then on the feet we find that there is a mixture of clay and uh, metal. Then we find the ten toes 
of those 10 barbarian tribes that are found in Europe. Then later on, we see a little horn in the, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the 10 tribes or the 10 nations, three were subdued. This was revealed properly in the vision when Daniel uh, had the vision in chapter 7 now, where he, his vision, in his vision, he was, give, he was shown the beasts, the lion, which had four wings. Then later on, the wings were plucked off, represented the head or in, the, in that statue, or the, the kingdom of Babylon. Then we see the bear, which represented Medos and Persia. We see the, 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 the leopard, which had the four heads and four wings, represented Greece. Then we had now the, a very vicious and the, the, a, 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 an animal or a beast which had no name, but it had ten horns. Then later on we found that from the same ten horns, one, there arose one horn which subdued the three, colorating with chapter two. Now today, we are looking at the subject, whose mark do you choose? We are now in Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 is here to sum up what is in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7. Let us go to Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 verse 1 and 2. This is what the Bible says. I hope you are following me with your Bibles. The Bible reads, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up of the sea, out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. So Daniel sees a beast rising up from the sea. Remember, the sea standing uh, representing uh, people and the sand, sand and the sea represent people. Then the beast represents a kingdom. So it is the kingdom that is now rising out of the water, out of, from among the people, this beast or uh, the kingdom rises. Now the Bible says it had ten horns, I mean seven, seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his head, the name of blasphemy. So from this same beast, one of the heads had the name blasphemy. And the beast, this same beast which I saw, was like unto a leopard. The feet were the feet of a bear. And his mouth was like a mouth of a lion. Follow me very closely. And the dragon gave his power and his seat and great authority to this beast. How is the relationship, this chapter, to or these verses of Revelation chapter 13 to the first, to the, 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 the book of Daniel and uh, of 2 and the chapter 7. If you remember very, very well in the vision of uh, Daniel, we had the lion. Here we are told this dragon, which now John the Revelator saw, had a mouth. This, from this same beast, it had the mouth of a lion. Two, it had feet or legs like that of a bear, made in Persia. Then three, it was it looked like a leopard. His, his body, the body of this beast was like a leopard. And so, we are told this same beast was given great power, the seat and great authority by the dragon. 
in the bible when we when we talk the bible talks of a dragon it talks about the devil satan satan is the dragon so we are told that this dragon the, the devil gives power to this beast authority and the seat to do what that's the question i want you to follow me very closely when you look at the kingdoms which daniel saw in daniel chapter 7 babylon had great wealth that is the reason why he was represented by the head of gold great wealth and power that element was found in this beast of revelation chapter 13 When we talk of the silver, the metal and pleasure. This is where we find a rule which this kingdom had they were not reversing if they decide to persecute someone no matter how much you try to intervene the punishment has to go ahead. Look at the issue of uh, Daniel when he was sentenced to 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 death he was because the decree was signed the king had no power to reverse instead they had to throw him in the lion's den this same kind of element is found is also in this same beast of revelation at the end of the time what the bible is telling us is that at the end of the time the people that will stand for god this beast or this kingdom will never reverse its decision if they say this one has to be cut his head off you have to be cut your, 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 your head off then we see that greece which was ruled by alexander the great was so swift so strong and so fast so, so fast the swiftness is also found and intelligence you remember in daniel chapter 7 that little horn which we discovered it is the purpose it had both religious and um, and and political power then it had eyes eyes symbolizing intelligence and so even in this case and swiftness in this case we find that in revelation chapter 13 this beast that element is also there then the fourth beast which was an indescribable the kind of ruling of the roman empire has come as was the, the current beast has just drawn those powers there is that residue when you look at the feet there is that iron so the rule the, the, the kind of rule uh, leadership or rule of the roman empire is still existing up to now except now it has some religious kind of power mixed with a political power let us go to the book a, a secular book actually this is a catholic quotation it says la banca professor of history in the university of rome says this is a professor of history in the university of rome this is what he says to the succession of the caesars came the succession of the pontiff in rome when we talk of the pontiff those of us that have worked closely with the catholic church these are bishops cardinals or the workmanship of catholicism so when they are saying when constantine left rome he gave his seat to the pontiff Constantine gives his seat to the pontiff. Are you matching with what we just read in Revelation? 
this dragon gave his seat to this beast. The devil will not directly come and give a seat to someone. It has to go through someone if the, if the devil wants to fulfill something. And so a seat has been given to the pontiff. History identifies this power. Listen to this. The transfer of the emperor's residence to Constantinople was a sad blow to the prestige of Rome. And at the time, one might have predicted a speedy decline. But development of the church and the growing authority of the bishop of Rome or the Pope gave her a new lease of life and made her again the capital, this time the religious capital of the civilized world. This book is Roman History, page 236. Go and find this quotation. You are going to find this writing. Let's go back to Revelation. Revelation chapter 13. Now we are going to look at verse 4 to verse 8. The Bible reads, And they worshipped the dragon. Daniel here sees people worshipping the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war unto him? Listen. People worshipped the dragon. In short, people worshipped the devil through the beast. Because the dragon gave the power to the beast, and the beast, the beast now people are praising the beast. Why whilst they are praising this beast, they are praising the devil. Because it's the owner of the power, the authority, the seat that was given to this beast. And then now they are wondering, who is like unto this beast? That is what they are saying. And he opened his mouth, this beast now opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. He blasphemes God, blasphemes heaven and his tabernacle, his church and them that dwell in heaven. All the angels are blasphemed. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. All that dwell upon it, this earth shall worship the beast, whose names are not written in the books of the Lamb slain from the foundation of this world. All of them, all many people who worship the beast, Though only those that their names are not written in the books of heaven. It is up to you and me to choose. If we decide to do the right thing, we know that this is the beast, I cannot worship this, this beast. Then your names are recorded there. If you decide to work otherwise, then they are saying you will be a part of these people that worship this beast. And the power was given unto him, and all kindred. This is now Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. And the power was given unto him, and over all kindred, and tongues, and earth. Let's go to verse 8. And there was given unto him a mouth. Listen to this. This we read also somewhere in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. 
this now beast was given the mouth. Because you may say, no, this is a beast. How come that one is, that, that, that is a horn? A horn represents a king or a leader. But it, the, that king has a kingdom to rule. And so this beast represents a kingdom. And when they, are, they talk about this beast talking, speaking pompous words or great words, great things against the Most High God, it is coming from a leader whom we found in Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And so the Bible says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. In Daniel chapter 7, we found that it was saying times, time and times and half a time. That is the same as 42, 40 and 2 months, which is 42 months. The calculation is the same. We will look at this at, in the later lecture. But for now, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God and his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. This beast opened the mouth to speak blasphemous things against God of heaven, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. What is blasphemy? That may be a question. There are other people that do not understand the word blasphemy, what it means. The definition of the Bible says, it is assuming any rights or power that belongs to God alone. When I start raising myself, telling people that I'm God, People should worship me. Anything that belongs to God, I start claiming that I am the one who possesses those. Then I'm blaspheming God. Now, listen to this quotation. This quotation is Ecclesiastical Dictionary. Ferrari's Ecclesiastical Dictionary. It is a Catholic book. Look for it and read for yourself. It says, the Pope is of so great dignity and so exalted that he is not a mere man. But as it were God and the vicar of God. When we hear the word vicar, it is in place this person is in place of God. So this person is in place of God. The Pope is not a mere man. The only person that we know, the only God that we know that is an infinite God who lives forever is God of heaven. The almighty God, our creator. But here we are told the Pope is not a mere, he is not a mere person. He is not a mere man. He is actually the one in place of God. That is what this quotation is, is saying. We are told his deadly wound was healed. Let us read Revelation chapter 13, verse 5. At, after a long period of time, after the period of uh, 42 months, his wound was healed. That is what we are taught. His deadly wound was healed. And the power was given unto him to continue 42 months, which is 1,260 days. Now, when we go to Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible reads, I have given you a day for a year. Biblically, when you talk of a day, it is a year actually. So, the 42 months, when this 42 months 
in 42 months we have 1260 days in 42 months meaning to say it is 1260 years since it is one day for a year so it is 1260 days so this was the period uh, which when the pope was caught and it seemed like he is dying out but after this period of this 1260 days his deadly wound was healed is this true what the bible is telling us let us go to a secular uh, quotation it reads the legal recognized supremacy of the pope began in 538 AD when there went into effect a decree of Emperor Justinian making the Bishop of Rome head over all churches. This was 538. The definer of doctrine and the corrector of heretics. Roman history, Abbott's Roman history, page 320, I mean 236 also has this to say. The transfer of the emperor residence to Constantinople was the, a sad blow to the prestige of Rome. And at the time of one might have predicted a speedy decline. But the development of the church and the growing authority of the Bishop of Rome or the Pope gave her a new lease of life and made her again the capital, this time the religious, the religious capital of the civilized world. This is history, I mean Roman history, page 236. I think we read it again. Look for these books. Prove if what I'm saying is the truth or not. Stanley's History, page 40. It is also another Catholic writer. This is what he wrote. The popes filled, with, filled the place of the vacant emperors at Rome, inheriting their power. The Pope filled the place of the vacant emperors at Rome, inheriting their power, prestige, and title from paganism. Constantine left all to the Bishop of Rome. I think we all know Constantine. He leaves his power, all his power, to the Bishop of Rome, who is the Pope. The papacy is the ghost of the deceased Roman Empire see, sitting crowned upon his grave, its grave. This is Stanley's history, page 40. Look for this book and prove this quotation. Let us go back to the Bible. And look at the Revelation chapter 13, verse 7, and once more again. Let us read through it. We, 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 we make a correlation with what we have, these books that we've just read. It says, And it was given unto him to make war. This beast was given unto him to make war with the saints. When we talk of the saints, these are children of God that have decided to stand for the truth of God to stand on the platform of truth, immovable. This beast has been given this power and one day is going to make war with the saints. And to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindred and tongues and nations. This beast. So in the 1260 years, from 538 to about 1798 
this head, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. It is, it is in this period, it was like it was wounded to death. Now, the, 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 the existence of purpose had, was almost finishing. That existence here was nothing, it, it was not there. Until in 1798, let us read the Encyclopedia Americana 1941 edition. Look for this book. This is what it is written. In 1798, he, Bathia, made his entrance into Rome. Bathia now makes his entrance into Rome, abolished the Pope government, and established a secular one. This was 1798. Then let us also look at the modern purpose. This was written by Reverend Joseph Rikeby, page one. This is what it has to say. Half Europe thought Napoleon's veto would be obeyed. And that with the Pope, the papacy was dead. That is what they thought that the purpose was dead. And yet, on contrary, Revelation 13, again, it says, and I saw one of his heads was like as if it were dead or it was wounded to death, as if it was dying out. And his dead wound was healed after. And it was healed and all the world wondered after this beast. People thought, ah, no, it is now dying out. Then it was healed. And when it was healed, it came back into power, into force. And all the world wandered after this beast. Let us go and see a secular newspaper called San Francisco Chronicle. This is a newspaper, a secular newspaper. It has these words to, 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 to tell us or to speak to us. The Roman question tonight was a thing of the past and the Vatican was at peace with Italy. In if affixing the autographs to the memorable document healing the wound, extreme Cordiality was displayed on both sides. On both sides. This is San Francisco Chronicle, February 11, 1929. A newspaper. These are the words that this newspaper, or the message that this newspaper delivered. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 13, verse 9 and 10. The Bible reads, if any man have an ear, let him hear. What? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That is Revelation chapter 13, verse 9 and 10. If you have an ear, this I say, listen to what the voice of God is speaking to you in these last days. These things are happening right now. This purple power is there right now. And they are working out certain things that catch us unaware if we don't study the word of God, if we don't hearken to the words of this prophecy. Verse 11, And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and it had two horns like a lamb, and it spake like a dragon. 
This is another beast again. It comes out. It had two horns. The first one had ten heads. I mean, seven heads with ten horns. This one is a second beast coming out of the earth amongst the people. But it looked like a lamb. When you talk of a lamb, it's something that is more Christian. And it spoke like a dragon. At the same time, it spoke like a dragon. This is Revelation chapter 11. Let's go to a secular book written by John Wesley. John Wesley, in his writing, he says, in his notes, he says, in Revelation chapter 13, written in 1754, this was written in 1754, he says, says of the two-horned beast, he is not yet come. The two-horned beast is not yet come. This was it, 1754. Though he cannot be far off, this second beast has not yet come, but he is not very far to his coming. For he is to appear at the end of the 42 months, the 1260 years, from 538. So it is to appear after this 1260 days. That is when this, this, this uh, second beast will appear. Now, let us go to the rise of America. I want us to talk about America now. America in 1776, the Declaration of Independence was made. In 1783, independence of America was acknowledged. Then the Constitution was framed in 1787. The Bill of Rights were added in 1791. 1798, recognition by France. This America is recognized by France. Remember, France was one of the, those seven tribes or seven nations that remained after the, 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 the three were subdued. One of the seven superpower countries that remained, the seven ones, France remained. But he recognizes now that, oh, there is another country rising up, America. Then in 1863, Slave Emancipation Act. Okay? Let us go to a book called La Civilta Catholica, Catholica, page 82 to 83. This is an of, uh, official Jesuit publication. It has this small quotation. It says, The Roman Catholic Church must demand the right of freedom for herself alone. The Roman Catholic Church must demand. This is not a nation. This is not a city, it is a church, a Roman Catholic church, a religious a, 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 a power. It demands the freedom for herself alone. Then Catholic World, July 1870, also says, the Catholic church or the Roman Catholic is to weld his vote for the purpose of securing Catholic ascendancy in his in this country. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13 verse 12. The Bible reads, and it exercises all the authority, all the authority 
of the first beast before him. This second beast which rose, which happens to be America, it came from without. Then a lot of things, or a lot of activities happened, the ones that I just read for you. The development, it, it rose quickly. Then it started speaking or exercising the authority like that of the first beast that we saw, the one with his seven heads. And causing the earth and those dwelling in it to worship the first beast. It is America that is going to fight the saints to make sure that everyone is enforced to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was once was healed. After seemingly looking as if it was dying out, his deadly wound was healed. So this second beast will make sure that it fights so hard to make sure that everyone worships the first beast. Let me pause there for a minute. We are going to continue very soon in a short while. May God be with us for now as we wait for the second segment. Thank you.